iPhone 10s Max versus 2020 iPad Pro 11 inch speed test coming up. Let's go. So what is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology. Let's begin with a boot up test on the iPad Pro 11 inch from 2020 and the iPhone 10s Max in three, two, one and see which one can get there first. Now both of these, you have to hold them down for like five seconds or so before the logo appears. And you might be wondering, well, Nick, that thing has the A12. Why didn't you just do the 2018 iPad versus the iPad? Cause I wanted to mix it up. I think it's pretty fun and interesting to see the phone next to the iPad. Thumbs up if you agree down below, but which one is gonna take the victory here? Oh, that was so close. It's gonna go to the iPhone XS Max by a hair. Hopefully there's no hairs on the table right now. Sometimes they get in the video, you know what I mean. So a quick confirmation before we go forward, the iPhone XS Max is rocking the latest 13.4.1. You can see right there. And let me bring that brightness down just a little bit, 13.4.1. And over here we have 13.4.1 for the iPad Pro 2020. So let's quickly test that Face ID mechanism. Oh, there we go. Really quick there for iPhone XS Max. And very good, but is the iPad Pro any better? Well, let's find out. So here we go with iPad Pro and boom. Now I do find that when you hold this thing in landscape though, sometimes you do miss cause you're covering the face ID and it'll give you like this little message. Face ID is covered, camera covered, see like that. But then if you look one more time, it'll go right in. So. Yeah, Face ID on this iPad is extremely fast, very similar to that on the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro Max, but the 10s Max is no slouch. So we've arrived at the app portion of this video. You can see everything closed out for the iPad Pro, everything closed out for 10s Max. Let's go ahead and begin with calendar, and you can see very similar there, and even scrolling is very similar, but the iPad Pro does have the promotion display. So it's a smoother scroll when going through apps like so. So definitely feels a little bit better to use than the iPhone. Let's go into clock and you could see very similar once again. And even when you're in there, just going through these like little sections are just incredible, incredibly fast. Let's go into Instagram, three, two, one. And you could see Instagram formatted like an iPhone there in the middle of the iPad screen. Let's go over here. You can see iPhone seemed to load that a little bit quicker, but overall, I gotta say, very similar stuff on both. Let's go over here to Twitter, and we'll go to my profile page here on both. Let's go to profile, and you can see very similar once again. iPad does have an iPad version of Twitter, which is really nice. Let's go into YouTube, and we'll head over to the Explore tab. Looks like the iPad had that a little faster, but of course, we know which one we would pick. When it comes to consuming YouTube content, of course, the big boy on the right, the iPad Pro 11 inch. Let's go into PUBG Mobile now and see which one is quicker to load this game. Now, let me know down below, which would you rather play your game on, the iPhone or the iPad? Is the iPad too cumbersome or is the iPhone too small? Let me know your thoughts on that down below. The iPad does have controller support though. You could see it'll take go. Got to confirm some stuff here and we'll X this out. And we'll X this out right here. So overall, just a very similar overall performance in PUBG getting to that initial launch screen. If we hit that start match, you can see both of them are gonna match up very well. You're just gonna have a much larger canvas to game inside of the iPad screen versus the iPhone. So the iPhone got into that match a little bit faster. Again, that A12 Bionic is a beast. Even though it's not the A13, this, this iPad right here still has an A12 Z chip, so it's still on the same line of processor. Let's go into Mortal Kombat and see which one could load this first. And I gotta say that I'm really, really happy with the performance with this new iPad, even though it seems like a slight bump on paper. It really just performs like a champ in pretty much everything. You can see the iPhone once again ahead here on Mortal Kombat just slightly, so hats off to the iPhone performance. Very good there. Maybe it's because this game was specifically optimized for phone. I'm not sure, but you can see very good stuff here on both of them. You could definitely game on both. I think that if you're gonna be gaming a long time, the iPad's gonna give you better battery life and maybe more enjoyable experience just because of the larger display though. What about Geekbench 5? 
And you can see the iPhone better optimized there wins that one. You could see the A12 Bionics clocked in at 2.49 gigahertz, whereas this one's clocked in at 2.48. Difference though is that this has 5.56 gigs RAM. This has 3.66 gigs RAM. Let's go home here. And now what I'm gonna do is just quickly go back through those apps to see if anything does stutter or reload, anything like that. Now, I probably definitely got killed in the match in PUBG, so that's probably gonna reload or something like that. Let's go to PUBG now and see what happened. And guess not, I'm still alive in that match right now. Let's get out of there. And let's go into YouTube. And you can see, very good on both. No real stutters or delay. Let's go into Twitter. Again, no stutters or delay. Let's go into Instagram. But I will state that the iPhone and this iPad have both closed YouTube on me if I just went out of it and went to a different app. I don't know why it does that, but sometimes it does that for me. Let's go into clock, and you can see very similar, and calendar. So if you have an iPhone XS Max and you were gonna get an iPhone 11 or 11 Pro, you could probably just get the iPad Pro here and uh, you can have both these combined and have a really great experience, a very iPhone 11 like experience in the iPad and just keep holding on to your iPhone XS Max for a little bit longer, maybe till the 12 comes. So let's head into our next test, which is going to be the Geekbench 5 test. So over here, we're gonna do our synthetic benchmark, which we know doesn't mean much of anything in the real world, but it's nice to see how these processors perform, at least in one of these CPU runs. So we're gonna go ahead and run benchmark and I will be back when they are done. And so you can see that the iPad Pro finishes test first, but take a look at this single core score. Very interesting, only one point better for the iPad Pro 2020, the 11 inch. So what we're seeing here is only a slight, if no bump in the everyday performance. It's like having the same chip essentially, but where it changes big time is the multitasking. 4,702 versus 2016. That's gonna be key when you're splitting the screen, but the iPhone 11 Pro Max don't really need this much power here in the multi-core because it doesn't offer the split screen mode. All right, so let's go into the Antutu benchmark now. We might get a little ad here, but this one, on the previous test, it had 693,447 points. That is gonna be a very hard score to beat. But let's go ahead and test them in three, two, one, and I will be back when they are done. O-M-G. Goodbye. I had, I had to go just take a minute, a moment of silence for the iPad Pro. 700,000, 006, 415. Goodbye, 10S Max. You're not close. <laughs> a crushing victory for this A12Z. And so we're not even gonna do a 3D Mark benchmark. It's not necessary. After what just happened with that Antutu, let's go ahead now and do a quick browser test. Now, one thing I will state is that I much prefer to browse on the iPad than on the iPhone. Reason being is because the iPad is a lot smoother to pinch the zoom and there's a lot more content displayed on this aspect ratio. So let's go to walmart.com and shout out to all the Walmart employees out there working through this current pandemic. You are really some heroes of society. Let's go ahead and hit go and see what happens. And looks like the iPad a little bit faster. Let's go ahead and pinch to zoom and boom, looking pretty good on both. Again, you could just see so much more content here on the iPad though, and because of the promotion, it's a much smoother experience. So for those of you who like to browse long hours, research, stuff like that. You'll love the iPad a lot more for this task. So let's go to target.com and shout out to the target plays as well, putting their lives on the line. 
so everyone can get their goods and needs. Looks like the iPad was a slightly snappier there. So yeah, I would pick the iPad for browsing mostly due to the size. I mean, just look at that thing. Just displaying so much more content than that of the iPhone XS Max over there. So definitely a better experience. And they both have this similar gesture though. So it's kind of like you're using the same device. Very similar and that's a very good thing if you just wanna have these two as your main computers. And now let's head into iMovie. So I did do a two minute and 41 second video edit on both of these and we'll see which one can actually export this faster. So let's hit, we're actually gonna save this video in 4K and let's hit 4K and see what happens. Exporting movie on both. Now my guess is the iPad is gonna win this one out, but the iPhone has shown to be a very fast performer as well. I'll be back when they are done. And so as I predicted, a crushing victory for the iPad Pro. Now, this is only two minutes and 41 seconds and it crushed the iPhone XS Max. This is also true on the 11 series. That phone's a little bit faster than the XS Max, but that phone would still lose here with multi, you know, clips and video. So when it comes to editing, the iPad is the better option, definitely the Pro series. And it's not like you didn't know that. Like, of course, I get the bigger screen, I get the Apple Pencil, I can get trackpad support, I can use a mouse, I, I know it's better for editing, but it's also better performing in the actual export times or render, stuff like that. It's gonna be quicker because of that multi-core performance and having six gigs of RAM, allowing other apps in the background to not slow this thing down. So at the end of the day, iPhone XS Max started out strong next to the iPad Pro, but the iPad Pro really started to shine when it came to the Antutu score, the benchmark and multi-core, the video editing. The iPad Pro 2020 is an absolute beast. So is the XS Max, but more in a, but it's more of a beast than an everyday phone usage. So what I mean by that, opening the camera, using your apps, blazing fast on the XS Max, but, because you don't really do a lot of multitasking, it also doesn't really need to have multi-core beast scores. But of course, the 11 Pro Max is better, and the upcoming 12 is also pretty close to this in those multi-core performance as well. That's really where the iPad shines. Let me know if you guys found this video helpful, entertaining, informing, and if you wanna see more videos like this where we compare iPhone to iPad, give it a big old thumbs up down below. It helps out the algorithm, it helps me out as well to know that you guys wanna see more of this. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, stay home if you can, and be sure to be well. Nick here, peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah.